Welcome once again. Right now we're at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. The fact of the resurrection. Paul wrote, Now I declare to you, brothers, the good news which I preach to you, which also you received, in which you also stand, by which also you are saved, if, there is a good condition there, if, if you hold firmly the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Now you see, some people believe that you are once saved, always saved. That's O-S-A-S, they call that. Once saved, always saved. Look what we just read here. This is just one of scores of times throughout the scriptures that it teaches you that you are saved conditionally. It says here, you are saved if you hold firmly the teaching that you received. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. First of all, in context here, you got to realize we have Paul. Paul is the one that wrote this. Paul is writing to a group of believers in the city of Corinth. We are reading someone else's mail. We are reading the letter of Paul to the believers to the church, to the saints in Corinth. These are not the words in red. These are not even the words of the 12 disciples. These are the words of someone outside of that circle, which is Paul. Paul sat down and wrote these words. And he said, Christ died according to the scriptures. Do realize here that when Paul wrote this letter, the only documents and writings that was deemed scripture was that which was written before Jesus was born. When Paul said, according to the scriptures, he wasn't talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He wasn't talking about his own letters. It took many, many years for the New Testament writings to finally fall under the category of scripture in the eyes of the church. So at this time, when Paul wrote this in context, he was talking about the B.C. writings. He was talking about all of the other scriptures that was written before Jesus was incarnated. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Again, this is not talking about New Testament scripture. And that he appeared to Cephas, that is the other name for Peter, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to over 500 brothers at once. We're not just reading stories that was made up by somebody. They had 500, it says over 500 witnesses, okay? Everybody knew it as a matter of fact. Most of whom remain until now. They were still alive when Paul wrote this. But some have also fallen asleep. They have passed away. They have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, as a child born at the wrong time, he appeared to me also. For I am the least of the apostles who is not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the assembly of God. Notice here, Paul made it very clear. There was the 12, then there was him. He never was part of the 12, never will be part of the 12. He was someone outside of that circle. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. His grace, which was given to me, was not futile. But I worked more than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Whether then it is I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. This whole chapter, we're going to be talking about the resurrection. What an awesome, awesome fact of history. Don't miss the next session. Until then, seek God with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.